What's going on guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to do a 3D wiggle in After Effects. It's really pretty simple to understand, but it takes some time and CPU power to um, actually edit it and get it the way you want. So um, I'm going to go through step by step exactly how I got this done. And there's obviously a lot of different ways you can use this, but um, yeah, I'll go ahead and get right to it. Okay, so here we are in our raw comp. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just build the scene and make adjustments as we go. So everything's going to be a 3D layer except for the background. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, a background now. I'm just going to go into my solids folder since I already made some and just drag one in. And it'll be the size of the comp automatically. Um, so next what we're going to do is actually duplicate this layer. And I'm going to size it down just a little bit. And I'm going to, to pre-comp it. So Control shift c and I'm going to call it Canvas. Um, check that. Uh, move all attributes into new comp and then OK and let's go into that comp and now I'm going to add my texture uh, here it is and put it right underneath that layer I'm going to scale it up to make sure it's at least big enough so I'm going to scale it up there and then luma mat it so change this mode right here to um, the track map mode so we can just change the canvas layer to luma mat so now this solid is track matted to our canvas. And now I'm going to add the ink blot on top of this. So here all I did was get rid of the white with the color key. So it's king linear color key. And like that. Just put it in the center. It's going to be perfect. Okay, that should work. I might scoot this over just some. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Okay, so next we're going to go back into our main comp and change all of this layer to 3D layer. Okay, so next I'm going to add the text, which is um, Alt, Control, Shift, T, and then I'm going to just call it 3D. And change it to 3D layer, scale it up. I'm going to hit A, go to the anchor point, and just make sure it's in the middle. Okay, so that's a decent background there. Um, let's go ahead and add Mikasa next. Uh, Mikasa, right there, 3D layer, and I'll position her to the side. Okay, so next I'm going to add a camera, which I'll just hit Control alt shift c and I'll just name it Cam. Uh, 35 mil is good. And now, when you see, when you move the camera around, everything's gonna move, okay? Everything except the white background because it's not a 3D layer, that's what we want. So next what we're gonna do is add a null and parent the camera to the, camera to the null. So let's hit Control, Alt, Shift, Y, and then parent the cam to the null, and I usually name it Cam Man, because that usually helps me. Um, so now what we're gonna do is add an expression to the cameraman and make him wiggle. So that'll make everything else wiggle as well. So let's go ahead, go ahead and hit P, and then Alt click on the stopwatch, and then type in wiggle. And this is where you have to be kind of creative because the number is going to be different. But I'm going to try and do, let's just do one frequency, and then like 30 amount. Okay. And you click off of it, and let's see what happens. Okay, it's wiggling, but there's no parallax. There's no uh, depth to the field or anything. So what we have to do is change the position of each layer to where um, they're not all in the same um, plane. So let's change Mikasa first so we can see that. So hit P and our third position here where it says zero, that's our depth. That's the Z. So let's change that negative. We're gonna go really, really far just so you can see. So now let's play this, or scrub through here. You start to see, a it's a little bit different, but let's go a little further. Okay, now she's starting to get off screen, so I'm gonna scoot her over and scale her down. Okay. I'm starting to see a little more, I'm gonna go really far. Now she's definitely gonna be wiggling all over the place compared to the rest of the um, scene. Yeah. So now she's in a whole different parallax to the um, to the background. I'm gonna do the same thing with the text here. So hit P, 
and change the Z negative. It's getting closer to the camera. And I'm just going to scale it down some more. Okay. And now they both got parallax, but now it doesn't really look like, um, it doesn't really look that natural because there's no shadows. So in order to add shadow, what I use is drop shadow. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Some people duplicate the layer and do that, but that's just makes a mess with all the layers. So let's use drop shadow. Um, let's go to our 3D layer. Let's do that one first. Go to our effects and presets and I already have it searched. It's drop shadow and sapphire. Let's add that onto our 3D. And I'm gonna shift it over here. And, and maybe a little further left. And down. And I'm gonna scoot the whole 3D text over some. Okay. I'm gonna adjust the opacity down some up there. And it's already looking a little bit more natural. And the same thing with Mikasa. So I'm just gonna hit Control Alt Shift E to apply the same effect. And then I'm gonna move her shadow way over here so it looks like she's really, really close to the camera. In comparison to, to how um, far away that 3D text is. Let's bring the opacity down, the blur up a little bit, and the opacity back up. Right about there should be good. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is add a drop shadow to the canvas as well, because it looks like it's connected to the background, which is what we don't want. So let's go ahead, same thing with the canvas, Control Shift E to add drop shadow. You can, you can see how useful this, this um, effect is here, because it makes everything so much easier. Change the settings a little bit to where you like them. And all right, so now that we've got the wiggle done, um, next thing we're gonna do is add the motion to the scene. And I'm gonna place the motion on the camera um, because since it has an expression on it already, you don't really wanna be messing with that because you could mess. It will sometimes it won't even let you change it. So let's just um, tap P on the camera and let's separate the dimensions. So right click and hit separate dimensions. So now we have these uh, individually. And we can go straight to our Z and keyframe it. Let's go to the beginning actually. Um, hit the stopwatch and hit F9. And I'll move this keyframe down like to like three seconds in. And then the Z is gonna come up like that. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to the graph editor and kind of like this, not too fast, about like that. And then next is rotation, so tap R. We're gonna use the Y rotation, so stopwatch F9, and move that one down about three seconds, and then let's change it. Yeah, positive should be good. Uh, about 100 degrees should be fine. And then this one's gonna be a little bit faster, I think. Let's, let's take a look. So it's gonna zoom. Okay, I think our rotation is just a little bit too high. So let's bring that down to like 70. But it, like, obviously it's just depending on your, on your taste and what you're trying to get done. Um, but yeah, see now Mikasa is like not really visible. So we can adjust the scale, excuse me, not the scale, the um, position some to where it's not so much. Okay. Yeah, I like to turn the rotation back up. But yeah, as you can see, that's pretty much all there is to it. I did do a couple more um, things to add detail to the scene. Um, like with Mikasa, I did duplicate her and then get rid of the drop shadow on the bottom one. And I changed the bottom layer to a black version of her. So I changed the lightness all the way down and then just just in here to the side like that and that just adds another little bit of detail a little more depth to the scene and you can see she's kind of coming off of the um into the composition there um so i'm just gonna scale her up too uh let's parent these but yeah that's really all there is to it um i hope i explain everything okay uh it's not really too hard to grasp once you understand what you're doing but if you have any questions, um, you want me to revisit this, just hit me up with a comment or a uh, message anywhere on Instagram or Twitter or something, and I'll try to address it. But yeah, uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Um, leave some suggestions if you have any, and I'll see you guys next time. 
Okay, one thing I did forget to mention is um, how to use aperture um, with the camera, which basically adds um, a little bit more realism. So when things get closer to the camera, they blur, and when they get further, it's, it comes into um, the right focus. Um, it's really easy. All you do is go to the cam, drop down arrow, let's close that. It's camera options. Then you have to change the depth of field to on, and then the aperture right here. So if you turn that up, you can see the things that are close to the camera are blurry. And then when it comes to the view, it'll get clearer, but um, sometimes you have to just keyframe it like that. So it'll be it'll be blurry when it's close, then it gets further away, it comes into view. That's really all there is, but um, yeah, leave a like if you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time.